is standing by. Good morning, Ohimai. Good, Good morning, Sally. Good morning, What's Shola. trending? <laughs> Let's take a look. Good morning, Nigerians, and welcome to Kakaki Social. You're watching AIT. I am Muhima Maize, your anchor on this segment. It's the governor of Kano State, Abdullahi Uma Ganduje, plotting the removal of the Emir of Kano, His Royal Highness Muhammad Sanusi II. Well, if an exclusive report by the cable is anything to go by, it appears that winter is coming and the battle for the Iron Throne of the Kano Emirate has just begun. But the big question remains, will the House of Sanusi survive? Well, this issue was in the social media yesterday. Uh, the governor of Kano State allegedly plotting the removal of the Emir of Kano, uh, Muhammadu Sanusi II. We'll take a look at that report this morning and how Nigerians are reacting uh, to the, this issue of uh, Sanusi versus Ganduje. The battle line seems drawn in Kano State. Uh, let's take a look at that exclusive report by the cable, uh, which told us what exactly is happening. Exclusive, Ganduje moves to remove Sanusi as Emir of Kano. Let's take a look at details of that report very quickly. Uh, in the next slide, Ganduje plotting the removal of Sanusi, the Emir of Kano. Abdullah Uma Ganduje, governor of Kano State, has relaunched moves to remove Muhammadu Sanusi II as the Emir of Kano, the cable can report. On Monday, the Kano State Public Complaints and Anti-Corruption Commission reopened the investigation into the expenditure of the State Emirate Council under Sanusi II. Also, at Monday's plenary of the House of Assembly, Kabiru Al Hassan Rurum, the speaker read a letter from one Ibrahim Salisu and others seeking the creation of new Kano Emirates in Karae, Bichi, Rano, and Gaya. Quote, the governor is determined to remove the Emir, and if this does not succeed, he will break the Emirate into pieces to whittle down Sanusi's power. An official of the state government who asked not to be named told the cable on Monday evening. A uh, serious power play going on, going, going on right now in Kano State between the Emir of Kano and the governor of Kano State, as this report has said. Let's go to the social media now and take a look at the reactions. Aisha Moody tweeting said, The Kano Emirate is bigger than Ganduje and its political ambition, and even bigger than Emir Sanusi as an individual. Dividing the Kano Emirate is less a revenge on Emir Sanusi than it is a collective insult on Kano's history, tradition, and heritage. Ahmad Musa Hussein quoting Ahmad Musa Hussein there in that tweet. And then from Simply Soulje, Governor of Kano State, Abdullah Ganduje, moves to remove Sanusi as Emir of Kano. This action of governor's intimidation on traditional rulers is becoming unbearable. Must the traditional rulers always dance to their tunes, even when they are failing? Simply Soulje tweeting yesterday. Uh, let's take a look at more reactions. Onye Jekwe, a maker, tweeting said, if this news is true, then Ganduje had better be ready for a big crisis and confusion in Kano State. I see it as the biggest joke of the year because he can't try it. He cannot dethrone Emir Sanusi and go free. Let him try it. In this case, power past power. It's a delicate thing. Onye Jekwe, a maker, tweeting uh, yesterday from JK Fage, Kano, oh, how the mighty have fallen. Traditional rulers in Nigeria, the North in particular, may be more significant than political elites. Ganduje's attempt to dethrone HRH Muhammad Sanusi Sanu II will set back the North, not just Kano, and cause chaos. JK Faje tweeting yesterday. Uh, we'll take a look at more tweets. Belo Nuhu in a tweet said, What the Ganduje government is doing at this moment to Muhammad Sanusi II is absolute stupidity and childishness. Taking Emir Sanusi down is unhealthy to Kano State and Northern Nigeria. So help us God, Abba is coming. From Belo Nuhu, we saw that tweet. Uh, Mr. Abel Julius tweeting said, Is it really happening? I learned Governor Ganduji of Kano wants to dethrone the Emir of Kano, Sanusi II. On what grounds does he have the power? Somebody please help my ignorance. In the next tweet, uh, we saw a uh, Twitter user. Let's take a look at what he, he tweeted. Kuso for real said, believe it or not, Ganduje can remove Sanusi and there's nothing you can do about it. The worst you can do is rant on Twitter. But for winning the election for his second term, Ganduje should just move on and forget Sanusi. Even though it was obvious, Sanusi wanted him to lose. Kuso for real tweeting yesterday. A lot of conversations in the social media about this uh, uh, power play going on in Kano State. Certified Hope tweeting said, traditional rulers have sold their rights to politicians already. It is time for them to suffer the consequences one after another. Certified Hope tweeting yesterday, Meloya in a tweet said, Is it now wrong to criticize the government? Criticisms put the government on its toes, but this is not so in the case of APC. 
May your lawyer tweeted, and Benny Meloya uh, posted that tweet. Suleimana Akinomo Akin said, an Emir should not have involved himself in partisan politics. He should have made sure he was seen as neutral. Criticize? Yes. Support a candidate or party? No. Suleimana uh, tweeting yesterday uh, on this issue. We move on very quickly to the case of Senator Ademola Deleke, the PDP gubernatorial candidate in Oshun State, who was arraigned before a magistrate court in Abuja yesterday for alleged certificate forgery. Uh, interestingly, as we have learned also in the social, social media, based on the concerns in the social media, he had actually been also arraigned for this same offence by another court. So is this a case of uh, double trouble for Senator Ademola Deleke? Uh, the PDP in a tweet yesterday, Let's take a look at what the PDP Twitter gave us some details about that case. Senator Adeleke, the PDP governor-elect of Oshun State, who was earlier arraigned before a Pape magistrate court, has been granted bail. Two, Senator Adeleke was granted bail in the sum of two million naira and a short tea in like sum. Three, the matter has been adjourned to 24th of June 2019. Rescue Nigeria. They embedded this video to that tweet. Let's take a look at this video very quickly. This morning, on five count charge relating to certain already existing uh, alleged offenses in terms of testimonial issue in his former school where he graduated. And aside from that, the equally arranging that the result or even the testimonials he presented as a serving senator when he was contesting were fake ones. Initially, we made a formal application. I did not appear as a counsel because I have no right of audience in this court. But I was around for the purpose of guiding the junior lawyers who are members of the team representing the interests of the defendant in respect of this matter. Objection was raised, especially concerning his appearance before the court, but the court of our rule, that he has the right to be arraigned before the court this morning. He was formally arraigned, his plea was taken, and he pleaded not guilty to all the counts as read against him. A formal application was therefore made orally for the purpose of admitting him to bail pending another deal of adjournment. He was granted bail in the sum of two million naira with one shorty in the like sum, and the shorty to be a resident in the jurisdiction of this horrible court. And the case was further adjourned to 24th of June for the purpose of the uh, prosecution presenting their witnesses for the trial of this matter. Your name, sir? My name is N-O-O, -O, okay? The initials? Nathaniel, okay? Thank you. Yes, Okay, we go now to the social media reactions. Henry Shields tweeting said, The arraignment of Senator Adeleke in court today was a test run, and the PDP missed a golden opportunity to show the presidency that it will not tolerate another season of political harassment. Henry Shields tweeting yesterday, Ario Aristotle in a tweet firing at the police force said, Attention, Nigerian police, it ridicules our nation and worsens your image as a lawless institution to illegally subject Senator Adeleke to double jeopardy and harassment over a matter already decided by superior courts. Using your coercive powers to serve political interests is unjust. Ariwi Aristotle tweeting, Andy Madaki in a tweet said, Kemi Adeoshun forged NYSE certificate and was Minister of Finance for three years plus. She resigned and went free, but Adeleke is being arrested and charged for a case already in another court. Our Vice President is a Senior Advocate of Nigeria and a law professor. Andy Madaki tweeted. Dom Joku in the tweet said, Before our ears here, Kemi Adeoshun admitted that she didn't know that the NYSE certificate she submitted was fake. Nobody has arrested nor invited her for questioning or further investigation. Senator Adeleke's only scene is that he contested and won Tinubu's Oshun state governorship. Dom Joku tweeted yesterday, Ademola Agbarago in a tweet contrary said, I don't know why people are supporting the so-called Senator Adeleke. The man forged two certificates, etc. He should be prosecuted, and if found guilty, face the consequences. Kemi Adeoshun was fired as finance minister for forging NYC certificate. We need to move Nigeria forward. Ademola Barago tweeting yesterday on that issue. And there's this report that has been trending in the Nigerian social media. Are helicopters now escorting the trains from Abuja to Kaduna? Well, the video you're about to watch seems to suggest that is the case. Uh, a Twitter user shared this video with us on Twitter some days ago. Let's take a look at uh, that tweet. Ibrahim Ado tweeted and said, When I tweeted that helicopters now escort train from Abuja to Kaduna, some people said I'm lying. Oh yeah, watch this video. I weep for Nigeria. Let's take a look at this video and how Nigerians are reacting to this. Oh, no, no, no. 
Okay, guys, you've seen the video. Let's take a look at reactions uh, to that video. In camp of Fong tweeting said, Let nobody think that this protection is for the poor. It is simply because the elites have abandoned their armored vehicles due to fear of attacks on the Abuja Kaduna Highway. They now travel with a train. In camp of Fong tweeted, Kinswa in the tweet said, What exactly is wrong here? What is wrong with being proactive and protecting the trains while the bandits are being engaged? Or should the government wait until a train is attacked? So you can wail again about no security. Kinswa in a tweet there. Things to deep with a tweet said, Nigerian government and wasteful spending. How do you explain the cost of piloting a train with a chopper? Each time the train moves, an helicopter follows. How about trackers and robust emergency security plan? Things to deep tweet and seems we have more security experts outside the police and the army <laughs> than we do inside. AK33M underscore tweet and said, Now I can confirm for certainty, Nigeria is cursed. Do you know how much that escort is costing the police? Why not get drones to patrol the train tracks and the Kaduna Abuja Expressway? Then get armed drones and set up two to three fourth bases for quick mobilization and intervention. Shaking my head, Akin make it 33 underscore M tweeting there. Obazo one, Isa Adeza John tweeting said, the escort is real. I live very close to Kuba train station. The kidnappers or whatsoever that evil is called threaten to attack the train soon. The threat is real. May God save us from this evil. Obazo one tweeting yesterday. We go now to Instagram when Nigerian celebrities are fighting themselves over this uh, debate about the right and wrong of uh, cyber crimes, popularly known here in Nigeria as Yahoo Yahoo. The artist Naira Mali some weeks ago, we brought you his report, uh, had said that Nigerians should actually pray for Yahoo Boys because they are contributing a lot to the economy. And the rugged man didn't take that lightly. He's uh, criticized that move, that uh, uh, expression from Naira Mali and said, no, that's illegal, that is wrong, it's immoral. We, are, we should have no business with cyber crimes. It's giving us a very bad image globally across the world. An artist who has a lot of followers should not be seen to be promoting this sort of uh, behavior, this sort of crime. And then Naira Mali fired back. So this uh, video you're about to watch, Naira Mali reacts to Rugged Man calling him a froster, upcoming artist. So Rugged Man actually berated him as an upcoming artist who should be busy doing records and not promoting Yahoo Yahoo. So let's take a look at what Rugged Man said and how Naira Mali responded and how Nigerians are reacting to this. Let's take a look. It depends on the response. Response from who? From Naira Mali himself. For a young upcoming artist like him, he mm. shouldn't be doing stuff like hey, that. Hey, you don't come out and just start uh, celebrating fraud. Fraud. Especially something not just Nigeria, but what the whole world is frowning upon. Mm. You understand? Great. You don't want to know how they look at Nigerians abroad because of fraud. Oh. Does two wrongs make a right? No! Because the government is making us lack a lot of things like jobs and all. You now want to start stealing and robbing and killing and say, oh, and you want to say it's because the government is not uh, you know, providing you with certain things. Hey. Everybody in the London, in the America, in the Dublin, we are not supporting that boy. He's a froster and his own. We are hardworking. There are a lot of hardworking Nigerians. Okay, that was a rugged man firing shots at Naira Mali. Uh, uh, unfortunately, we, can't, we don't have Naira Mali's own version, but uh, he actually berated rugged man in his own video. He gave a clap back that a lot of Twitter social media users have called epic. Uh, from uh, that black woman, the person said, this low budget Snoop Dogg needs to take his calabar braids and go and sit down. One song and he thinks is the deal. No humility and respect for those that pave way for them in the industry. Uh, that black woman posting on Insta blog, Skeza posting said, Naira Mali is irrelevant. His music is irrelevant. And of course, he's an upcoming artist. Rugged Man is a legend in that industry. He has done a lot in the past. He used his time well. He was a beast. And what he said in this video isn't bad at all. And also the truth. Mali shouldn't disrespect him. They are really not mates. Just because Mali came when social media is crazy and he has a bunch of followers, 
Is he mad? His hair like funny to his makeup. Skays are posting on Insta blog yesterday from MC Marco Polo. I don't think Rugged Man's time went anywhere. He is still much relevant. And I think he killed the FU challenge. MC Marco Polo posting on Insta blog Niger yesterday. Uh, the stylist Tamara posting said, but he's saying the truth. This issue is getting worse every day. Because of this same fraud issue, I was reminded today that I can't accept payments on my website from international clients. That ban has been on for years. It is a shame on all of us. If you support fraud, you are part of our problem. The stylist Amara posted. NFF president is trending. NFF president Pinik Amaju charged with $8,400, $4 billion naira fraud. The president of the Nigerian Football Federation, NFF, Amaju Pinik, and four others have been charged by the federal government with alleged misappropriation of $8,400 belonging to the football body. The nation is reporting. In a 17-count charge filed before the Federal High Court in Abuja on Tuesday, the money was said to have been paid by, the, by FIFA to the NFF as appearance fees in the group state of the Russia 2018 World Cup. Uh, let's take a look at the comments from Nigerians. This was posted on Insta blog yesterday. I am Eni Olorunda. Posting said he attends every comedy show and is always on the 5 million naira table. Nigerians really monitor people, you know. Oladeji official posting said, foremost 5 million VVIP table buyer in comedy shows and music concerts in Nigeria. But he is not a Yahoo boy, so no one will crucify him. Oladeji official posting yesterday on Instablog, Alfred Egbon said, Shay, this is the same guy our comedians and musicians praise and associate with, saying, Amaju money, eh? He has, eh? When I don't see. Alfred Egbon posting yesterday on Instablog, Marsha Benoit in the post said, after when I go to pursue Yahoo Boys, these are the Ogak Patapata of them all. Masha Benoit is posting yesterday. Dokito Savage exclusive said, I don't believe, don't believe Bwari's regime at all. Amaju has been attacked for many months now, and his seat has been in the eyes of a certain government official. Dokito Savage posting. So what happened to Baka yesterday? Barcelona lost 4-0 to Liverpool yesterday. And uh, someone actually described Lionel Messi as Messi Aigbe, that it wasn't Messi we saw yesterday, it was Messi Aigbe that was on the pitch playing. Really, what happened to Baka yesterday? The demolition of Baka yesterday was quite interesting and very sad. Hank Vard Jr. posting on Twitter said, The GOAT, Messi, was slaughtered and it's not even Salah yet. <laughs> very interesting play on words there. And then from Rimeldo underscore K, Liverpool showed Baka no Messi. They went to Anfield for nothing. Okay, another nice play on words there. And then, <laughs> quite interesting, the parody handle of President Bwari tweeted yesterday before the game. He said, if Liverpool does the impossible and qualifies, I will reveal the person behind this account. Now, this is the most popular parody account of President Bwari on Twitter. And after the match, after Baka lost 4-0 to Liverpool, it came back and listed his Twitter handles. The handler is one of the following at Chidi, at Roland Speaks, at El Crucifixio, at Yemifash, at Mysteria, and at Ayami Lemona. Good night. So, according to this handler, these are the people that are managing that account. One of those people. Typical NGR posted this video exactly a year ago. Lionel Messi promised fans the UEFA Champions League. Let's take a look at Messi actually promising that they are going to really put up a good showing. But let's take a look at this video. Es lo, lo que conlleva ser el capitán de este club. Pero tuve la suerte de, de tener grandes ejemplos. Con respecto a este año, creo que hicimos una plantilla como para ilusionarnos. Creo que los fichajes que vinieron nos van a ayudar muchísimo a, a ser mejores de lo que éramos. Si bien el año pasado fue muy bueno, que ganamos Copa y, y la Liga, Pero también es verdad que todos nos quedamos con, con la espinita de la Champions, de la eliminación, por, por cómo fue más que nada. Así que hoy nosotros prometemos que este año vamos a hacer todo lo posible para que esa copa tan linda y tan deseada por todos vuelva a atacar otra vez en el Camp Nou. Uh, they say if wishes were horses. So what exactly happened to Messi yesterday? Not even one goal. Okay, somebody on social media posted this video and said, the GOAT, and Messi is usually often referred to by his fans as the GOAT, the greatest of all times. But uh, a Twitter user, John T, posted this video and said, argue with your keyboard, though. 
This goat is better than Messi tonight at Anfield. Liverpool backer, LFC backer, retweet and like if you love Liverpool. Let's take a look at this video as we close the show this morning. My God, the attacking spirit of that goat. You just have to love it. <laughs> they say that goat did better than Messi yesterday. Okay, this is where we draw the curtain this morning. Follow the conversation on WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Kakaki Social. I am Ohima Maize. Hand you over back now to Shola and Salamat. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. That's your last content, though. Thank you so much, Ohimai, and right, see you, you tomorrow. All right, bye.